2005 Mercedes ML350 front brake pads, rotors, and sensor replacement. I'm Brian Nessa from How To Automotive, and I'm gonna walk you through that process. Get started, you're gonna get your vehicle in the air, and um, if you're doing this at home, use floor jacks and jack stands, and go ahead and remove your front wheels. Okay, the first thing we wanna do to get these uh, brake calipers off, so um, what I'm gonna do is, on the back side here, there's a T30 Torx. So it's gonna look like that. So right here in the rubber grommet, you'll remove the T30 here. And then on the uh, rubber grommet on the bottom of the caliper, you'll remove that T30 there. So once you get the top and bottom uh, T30 bolts unbolted, you may have to reach around the back of a little screwdriver or something right here and kind of push the pins through. They, may, they like to get stuck inside the little rubber grommets. So go ahead and push them through where you can get your fingers on them. And then go ahead and work them and pull them completely out like this and set them aside for now. So now we're almost ready to pull the caliper off. But what I found over the years is they developed these lips here and then the caliper doesn't want to pull off. So what I do is just take a little screwdriver or a little pry bar like this in this case and put it in the top of the pad here. Kind of wedge it in there and, and just pry over the pad just a little bit. That, and that pushes the piston in just a little bit. And now you can get it off. So once you got that done, you're gonna reach from the, it has this clip here so you can't pull from the top. So you need to pull it from the bottom and you pull the bottom out and uh, you may even use your little screwdriver pry bar to get it started. Now that you got the bolts out, you need to pull the uh, brake lining sensor out. We're on the uh, passenger side here. So you're just gonna pull this sensor straight out. Unplug it like that and just let it hang. Then after getting the bolts out and prying the uh, the uh, pad in a little bit with the screwdriver, like I mentioned a second ago, take the bottom of it and pull outwards. And now you can slide the caliper off. And for right now, we're just going to set it on top of the uh, on top of the uh, suspension like that. And now we're going to get this rotor off. And to do that, we're going to remove the two 13 millimeters here to hold this little bracket on the corner of it off. And then take the T30. Uh, Allen or torque screw here out and then the rotor will come off one of the I recommend using an impact screwdriver on the um, On the bolt that holds the rotor on it. They're very easy to strip out. So That's the the best way, but you don't have to but that's the way I choose to do it So after you take the bolt out if the rotor is kind of stuck to the hub I recommend screwing the bolt back in a couple threads Striking it on the back of the rotor with a hammer a few times and that'll pop it It'll get it'll pop it free from the it's little rust on the hub here and then, uh, then you can re finish removing your, your bolt. And the reason why I put that bolt in there, if you smack it here, it, it'll fall straight to the ground. So this will catch it, or you can put a lug nut back in it. Now that we got a rotor off, I'm gonna quickly just run a wire brush around the hub here to help aid in the new rotor seating uh, flush here. So after you wire the wire, wiring the, uh, the hub, you know, the, the surface rust uh, off, now you can take your attention to the bracket here and they have these little clips on the end and you can use the wire brush and clean those off and if they're pitted or dented or anything like that where the pads won't, uh, won't slide smoothly on the top and the bottom ones, uh, then you need to order new ones. If they're in good shape, then, you, then we can put a little lube on them. And, uh, and the lube I like to use is called Seal Glide. It's a brake uh, lubricant, uh, especially designed for using on brakes. Uh, you can get small little packets of it or you can get a big tub of it like we got here and um, So ask your part supplier for some it doesn't have to be this brand But just lubricant this design for brakes and that after you get it all all wired up Then you're just going to take a little finger full and then kind of just Just rub it on the guides where the, where the, it slides a little bit You don't want a lot because you don't want dirt to build up on it and cause it to stick to just a slight little bit of grease so now that you got the uh, slides all lubed up and taken care of, um, now you can go ahead and put your new replacement rotor on, and then you're gonna uh, start your little torque bolt. They usually come with new ones, and uh, tighten that down. And then uh, what I like to do here at the shop is I like to put a little uh, thread sealer lock. So it looks like this. This is a Permanex brand that you can barely see the label here, but it's it's a little bit of glue that you would put on the in, on the threads of the bolts. This is the uh, my rotor came with a new one, so this is the old one here. So you put a little bit of that glue on the uh, on the threads and you would tighten it up and that helps prevent the bolts from vibrating loose coming back off. Now that we got that done, uh, we're going to turn our attention to the uh, caliper here 
And uh, the first step we're going to do is uh, pry off the old the old outer brake pads. And what I like to do is just get a, a pry bar or a screwdriver or something in here, stick it in between the little clip here, and we're not reusing it, and, uh, and just kind of bend it out and flare it out, and then you can just take it off. So after you get the pad off, just set it aside, and, and you want to keep track of it because the left and right side are different. So you want to make sure you uh, this is we're on the driver side here. So I'm gonna set that aside. Now what we need to do is inspect our, our, our boot in here uh, for the piston and make sure the boot's uh, not torn or, or leaking any fluids or anything like that. And after you determine that's in good condition, we need to press this piston back into the bore. And to do that, what I do is I lower the vehicle down and I suck a couple ounces of brake fluid out of the master cylinder. And the reason why is when we do this, I'm going to push this piston in, but I'm not going to open the bleeder screw. And um, which is right here. So I'm not going to open that up. I'm going to leave it closed and that's going to push the fluid back up into the master cylinder a little bit. And uh, if it's over full, it'll spill out into the engine bay. So that's the reason why I suck it out. And after we're done, we're going to pump these brake pedals five or six times and that's going to pump the fluid back into the caliper. And you'll have a nice firm pedal without having to bleed the brake system. And uh, the only thing is you'll, you'll double check your fluid level on the uh, master cylinder after you're done. So the way I like to do that, this is I like to use a, a C-clamp, like so. Start your C-clamp like this, and then you just turn your, your, your handle, turn it in, and it pushes the piston in for you. Now that the piston's fully in, now you can just take your fingers like this and kind of squeeze and pull the uh, old pad off. Now that I've got the pad off, we need to lubricate the uh, bushings here and make sure they're not torn or in any shape. And we need to take our pins that we took out earlier, the T30s here, and we need to lubricate these. And then when, once you get them all lubricated, what I do is I put them back inside and I push them back and forth with my fingers until they slide back and forth and, and, and circulate them to get the, the grease in this bushing working. So I'll put a little grease on it like so and kind of shove it through. And I may do this a couple times, work the grease on there like this. You know, work it through and get get it good and sliding pretty good like that. And then any excess grease, that I'll I'll just wipe off with a rag. So then I'll push them through like this with my fingers, and I'll put a tiny dab of this little uh, blue Loctite on the threads here. Let's see if I can. So I just put a, a few little dabs like that on the threads, and that uh, that that's a little added protection. So. Uh, the, they don't vibrate loose and come back off. Now after I got them back on there, then I push them back in like this. So when we go to reassemble them, they're not in the way. Uh, okay, now we need to uh, put our brake pads on. So the, you're gonna take the inner pad and it's gonna look like this. And it's gonna have this little this little ear on it. And it's also gonna have the, the, the sensor on it. And if it doesn't, you can order a new sensor and you'll have to uh, transfer the uh, the sensor through it just has that little clip there and it goes through the back side but mine came with it so what i'm what i'm gonna do before i put this on i'm gonna put a little of that seal glide grease around on the back of the shim here so the grease will look like that and the reason why i do that is it it helps prevent squeaks and vibrations and uh so i put a little bit back on the on the shims but you want to be careful not to get any brake grease or, or anything on the uh, rotor the new rotor or the uh, the brake pad itself that actually can cause squeaks. So after you get that done, you, you just align your brake pad into the grooves, and then you just press it in. It's actually easier to use two hands and push from the from the from the very ends of it. Okay, now that the uh, the inner pad is put in. Now you're gonna take your match up your matching uh, pad for the. You know, I'm on the driver's or driver side here, so so what you're gonna do is you're gonna line it up where these little grooves these little hash marks they, they go into these little circles here so you line those up and then you, what you do is you just squeeze them down or if you got in a good spot you can just pop them down like that and then you just double shirt double check that the, the pad is sitting flush and those little hash marks are inside the little circles and uh, once that's you know you're satisfied that that's in the right position it's time to actually put the caliper back on so to do that, you're going to start the caliper over the rotor like so. 
Hold on, I gotta figure out how the uh, brake pad lining indicator works. So it just routes in there like that and we're gonna fold it and around here in a second. So, so what we need to do is uh, we need to flare this a little with your thumb and tuck it underneath here and to push it up, pushed up in there, then you rotate the back of the caliper downwards. Also, when you do this, you wanna make sure that your brake hose is not twisted and uh, the last video clip of mine was twisted, so I took it back off and uh, untwisted it. And also, it's very common for it to pop out of this little grommet here. So go ahead and just push that back in. So once you got the uh, caliper fully seated, on the way it goes, go ahead and tighten up the, the, the two uh, torque bolts, the T30s, tighten those up. Now that the caliper's on and bolted up, go ahead and take your uh, sensor and um, plug it in. So all it does is push into the little, the little mounting tab, it just pushes in until you'll see the rubber grommet go all the way in and fully seat. And you might want to take one hand behind and one hand and push. So after getting your sensor plugged in, go ahead and put the bracket on here and tighten the two bolts down. I also used Loctite on these two bolts here. And um, now you're, you're ready to uh, install your wheels and uh, you're going to duplicate this exact same process on the uh, the passenger side, the only difference is, is it will not have a, uh, a lining sensor, so it's actually easier on the other side. And uh, once you complete the complete that, you know, you'll pump your brake pedals, your brake pedal, and uh, get that fluid back into the master cylinder, like I said, before you drive it, and you know, make sure your wheels are torqued down, and that completes the job of replacing the front brake pads, rotors, and sensors on a uh, 2005 Mercedes ML350. I'm Brian Essek from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos and encourage you to subscribe for more valuable videos like this. Thanks again.